Many engineering metals must be very hard to resist surface indentation or wear and yet possess adequate toughness to resist impact damage. The combination of a hard surface and a soft interior is greatly valued in modern engineering because it can withstand very high stress and fatigue. They are properties that are useful in parts such as cam or ring gear, bearings or shafts, turbine applications, etc. The process used to achieve this is known as surface hardening. Therefore, surface hardening is defined as a process by which a metal is given a hard, wear-resistant surface while retaining a ductile but tougher interior. It is a method used to improve the wear resistance of metal parts without affecting the softer and tougher interior of the part. The surface hardening technique can be classified into two major categories. 1. Case hardening or diffusion method. 2. Selective surface hardening method. Case hardening. Case hardening which is a surface hardening process by diffusion, involves the chemical modification of a surface. They are processes that change the surface chemical compositions. Case hardening methods include carburizing, nitriding, carbonate riding, and cyaniding. Carburizing. Carburizing is a surface hardening process in which carbon is introduced into the surface layer of steel. It is the oldest surface hardening method, in which steel is placed at a high temperature for several hours in a carbonaceous environment. Case hardness of carburized steel is primarily a function of carbon content. The steel is heated in contact with a substance that has a high carbon content at a high temperature generally between 850 to 950 degrees Celsius, and held at that temperature for a suitable period. It is then quenched rapidly to produce a hardened surface layer or martensitic case, with good wear and fatigue resistance over a softer and tougher core. The depth of the carburized case depends on the carburizing time, the steel chemistry, and the available carbon at the surface. Most steels that are carburized are killed steels. Since the carburizing process does not harden the steel, but only increases the carbon content to a desired depth below the surface, the case and core have quite different harden abilities. While the basic principle of carburizing has remained unchanged since it was first introduced, the methodology has gone through continuous evolution. Various techniques of carburizing have been developed to increase efficiency and reduce cost. In its earliest application, Parts were simply placed in a suitable container and covered with a thick layer of carbon powder, pack carburizing. Although effective in introducing carbon, the pack carburizing method was exceedingly slow, and as the production demand grew, a new method using a gaseous atmosphere was developed. Despite the increased complexity, gas carburizing has become the most effective and widely used method for carburizing steel parts in high volume. To summarize, the carburizing method includes pack carburizing, gas carburizing, vacuum carburizing, liquid or salt bath carburizing. Nitriding. Nitriding is a surface hardening process that introduces nitrogen into the surface of steel at a temperature range of 500 to 550 degrees Celsius in its ferritic conditions. Nitriding is most effective for alloy steel which contains stable nitriding forming elements such as chromium, molybdenum, vanadium and tungsten. Because nitriding does not involve heating into the austenite phase with quenching to form martensite, nitrided components exhibit minimum distortion and excellent dimensional control. Nitriding time depends on steel composition and the depth of hardening desired. The process methods for nitriding include gas, liquid and plasma nitriding. Plasma nitriding also known as the ion nitriding process is a method of surface hardening using a glow discharge technology to introduce nitrogen into the surface of metal which subsequently diffuses into the metal. In this process, the steep components to be nitrided act as cathode. The component is heated by an electrical heater to 600 degrees Celsius. This heating operation is followed by switching on the supply of a gas mixture of hydrogen and nitrogen at low pressure. Sufficiently high DC voltage, 500 to 1000 volts, is applied between the cathode components and anode to form plasma. Current flows between the two electrodes and the mixture of hydrogen and nitrogen gas gets ionized. The cathode component to be treated is subjected to this ionized discharge. The nitrogen ions that are formed bombard the surfaces of the component with considerable energy. Parts of the energy heat the cathode components and allow diffusion of nascent nitrogen inward from nitrides. The remaining parts of energy are used for displacing the secondary electrons from the cathode surface. The processing time for gas nitriding can be quite long. Plasma nitriding allows faster nitriding time, and the quickly attained surface saturation of the plasma process results in faster diffusion. Due to these improved capabilities, the plasma nitriding method has become increasingly popular. 
Carbonitriding. Carbonitriding is a surface hardening process by which carbon and nitrogen, via ammonia gas, permeate the surface layer of steel components. The process involves a temperature of around 850 degrees Celsius, followed by quenching in oil or gas solutions. The carbonate riding process combines simultaneously nitriding and carburizing, and while these two processes are distinguishable, they are not completely independent. The goal of the process is to introduce carbon and nitrogen into steel in its austenite condition, which becomes a martensite matrix microstructure after quenching. The diffused nitrogen has a stabilizing effect on austenite and lowers the critical quenching speed and as a consequence, the hardenability of the steel. Carbonitriding is performed in a gas atmosphere furnace using a carburizing gas such as propane or methane, source of carbon, mixed with several volumes percent of ammonia, source of nitrogen. The process is carried out at lower temperatures, and generally for shorter times than carburizing, and therefore the components are less prone to distortion. If there is too much nitrogen introduced to the steel, it can result in retained austenite, which is austenite that does not become a martensite microstructure after quenching. Successful completion of the carbonate riding process will grant the steel components a variety of beneficial properties, most notably increased wear resistance, and there are many different applications for carbonite rided parts in high wear situations such as gear teeth, bearings and tools. Cyaniding Cyaniding is similar to carbonate riding in that the process involves both the diffusion of carbon and nitrogen into the surface layers of the steel. Cyaniding is carried out in a liquid bath of sodium cyanide. If the process is carried out in a gaseous atmosphere, it is called carbonate riding. In the cyaniding process, the part to be surface treated is immersed and heated in a liquid bath of sodium cyanide at 800 to 960 degrees Celsius, with the concentration varying between 25% and 90% then quenched in brine, water or oil. In the process, the measured amount of air is passed through the molten bath. Sodium cyanide reacts with oxygen in the air and oxidizes. Carbon and nitrogen form in atomic form diffuse into the steel and give a thin wear-resistant layer of the carbonitride phase. Salt bath composition may vary according to the temperature of the salt, the thickness of the case to be obtained, the type of steel to be heat-treated, and the period of operations. This process is not suitable for surface hardening those parts which are subjected to shock, fatigue and impact, because nitrogen addition has adverse effects on such properties of steel. 2. Selective surface hardening method. Selective surface hardening is a process of hardening that does not change the surface chemical composition. This can be achieved by localized heating and quenching, without any chemical modification of the surface. The more common methods of selective surface hardening currently used to harden the surface of steel include flame hardening and induction hardening. Flame hardening. Flame hardening is a process of austenizing the surface of steel by heating it with an oxyacetylene or oxyhydrogen torch and immediately quenching it with water or water-based polymer. The result is a hard surface layer of martensite over a softer interior core with a ferrite perlite structure. Flame hardening increases a steel component's malleability while hardening its surface. There is no change in composition, therefore the flame-hardened steel must have adequate carbon content for the desired surface hardness. Typically, flame-hardened steel is used in automotive equipment components like gears and blades, because of its high wear resistance. The disadvantage of flame hardening is the possibility of part distortion as a result of overheating. Induction hardening. Induction hardening is a complex combination of electromagnetic heat transfer and metallurgical phenomena that can perform uniform surface hardening and localized surface hardening on metal pieces. It is a method of quickly and selectively hardening the surface of a metal part. A high-frequency alternating current is generated in a copper tool electrode, primary coil, which is adapted to the shape of the workpiece to be hardened. This in turn leads to a constantly changing magnetic field around the electrode, which penetrates the adjacent workpiece and generates eddy currents due to the induction effects. These very large eddy currents of up to several thousand amperes per square millimeter lead to heating of the workpiece. The workpiece is then quenched in water which transforms the structure to martensite which is much harder. The depth of heating produced by induction is related to the frequency of the alternating current, power input time, part coupling and quench delay. The higher the frequency, the thinner or more shallow the heating. Therefore, deeper case depths and even thorough hardening are produced by using lower frequencies. Some of the benefits of induction hardening are faster process, energy efficiency, less distortion and small footprints. Its disadvantage is its high cost.
Laser hardening. Laser hardening is a surface hardening process commonly used for complicated shapes or large objects because it allows for absolute control of the surface hardening and texture. This process is sometimes referred to as laser transformation hardening to differentiate it from laser surface melting phenomena. There is no chemistry change produced by the laser hardening method. The process like induction and flame hardening provide an effective technique to harden ferrous materials selectively. The process consists of the rapid heating of a material surface by laser beams, a short hold at the target temperature, and an intensive cooling due to the high thermal conductivity of the material, resulting in very fine martensitic microstructure, even in steels with relatively low hardenability. Laser hardening can be used to locally improve wear resistance and service life of parts for a wide variety of applications, from press forming tools to oil drilling equipment. The technology is suitable for applications where minimal heat input into the surrounding material is critical. Electron beam hardening. Electron beam hardening like laser hardening is used to harden the surface of steels. Electron beam hardening uses a concentrated beam of high velocity electrons as an energy source to heat a selected surface area of ferrous parts. Some advantages of surface hardening include improved surface wear resistance, reduce internal distortion, improve fracture toughness etc.